Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. In this video, I want to explain a specific aspect of glasses that you may have heard about. Why are glasses defined as strong or fragile? What do those terms mean? It sounds like a glass will be either near unbreakable or very likely to shatter. But actually, the two terms have very specific scientific meanings that are not easy to guess. But that's OK. That's what I'm here for. So enough babbling. Let's put glass to good use and make a start. Glasses are really high viscosity liquids formed when a material is cooled rapidly from the liquid state. I've explained the formation of glasses in some detail in another video, link below of course, but in brief. As we call a material from the melt, if we don't give the molecules time to reorient themselves and condense into perfect alignment in a crystalline structure, then we will form a supercooled liquid. That is, a liquid that exists below the melting temperature of a crystal form. The material has the structure of a liquid, which means all the molecules are moving about freely and there is little structural alignment between them. As the temperature continues to reduce, the molecules have less and less energy, so move more and more slowly. This has the effect of reducing the volume of the sample, which brings the molecules closer and closer together increasing the strengths of intermolecular bonds and increasing viscosity. Thus, as our material moves along the supercooled liquid line, it is effectively becoming an ever more viscous liquid. At some point then, the viscosity will become so high the material looks and feels like a solid. Effectively, the molecules have become frozen, although I prefer the word trapped. Frozen for most people means below zero because they're thinking about water but the principle applies to any glass at any temperature uh, in position and we say the material has formed a glass. A glass then has the structure of a liquid but the viscosity of a solid. Why are some materials described as fragile glass formers and others as strong glass formers? Well to understand that we need to look more closely at how the viscosity changes as a material approaches its Tg. That is usually done by plotting log of viscosity, for reasons I'll come back to in a moment, as a function of temperature. Now, in order to show you the difference between strong and fragile glass formers, I need to put data for at least two materials onto the same set of axes. And that's tricky if I plot temperature on the x-axis as I would need to find examples with the same Tg. Rather, it's much easier to normalise the temperature axis for Tg. That way, we can plot data for any material and they'll all line up on the x-axis. To normalise, we divide the Tg for the material by temperature. That will give an axis where the number 1 equates to the Tg, values lower than 1 represent temperatures higher than Tg, and values higher than 1 represent temperatures below Tg. <laughs> now, I know that's a little bit confusing, but if you think about it for a bit, you'll see it makes sense. So, here are the data for three glass forming materials, silicon dioxide, glycerol and orthophenoxyl. Higher values on the y-axis mean greater viscosity. 1 on the x-axis corresponds to the Tg for each material, and because the rest of the x-axis shows values less than 1, this corresponds to temperatures above Tg. Thus, if you follow the lines from left to right, you are seeing the change in viscosity as each material approaches its Tg. Why are we plotting log viscosity rather than plain old viscosity, I hear you ask? Well, that is because sometimes if we plot log data and we end up with a straight line, this tells us something important. And in this case, you can see that the data for silicon dioxide are linear, but those for the other compounds are not. 
That tells us that the data for silicon dioxide follow an Arrhenius type relationship. Now, if you've forgotten what that means, fear not. <laughs> the Arrhenius relationship shows how the rate of chemical reaction changes with temperature. And in principle, plotting log of the rate constant versus reciprocal temperature should give a straight line. Here, we are concerned with the change in viscosity with temperature. But remember that viscosity is related to the rate at which molecules are able to move. So it is essentially like plotting a rate term. Hence, if we plot log viscosity with temperature and we see a straight line, the material is following Arrhenius type behaviour. When we see this behaviour, we say the material is a strong glass former. Usually, materials that are strong glass formers have covalent, that is, quite strong and reasonably well aligned, intermolecular bonds. The alternative and more common to pharmaceutical materials behaviour is a non-linear change in log of viscosity with temperature, shown by glycerol and orthophenoxyl. We call these fragile glass forming materials. Why is the change in log of viscosity not linear for fragile glass formers? Well, that is the subject of much debate in the literature. But again, if I summarise simply, the intermolecular bonds in fragile glass formers are non-covalent and randomly aligned. Being random means there are many more ways in which molecules can move to form interactions with near neighbours. There may be intramolecular movements like bond rotations and vibrations, as well as whole molecule movements. Where movement is intramolecular, we call them alpha relaxations, and where they are whole molecule movements, we call them beta relaxations. Thus, as the temperature of a fragile glass former is reduced, there are changes in both alpha and beta relaxation processes, and these may change differently with respect to temperature. Arrhenius behaviour assumes there is only one type of reaction occurring, and since there are at least two for fragile glass formers, this leads to non-Arrhenius behaviour. Does this really matter for amorphous materials? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, probably not. It's a rather technical way of categorising the glass formation process for different materials. And at the end of the day, what matters more is whether your glass is stable at the temperature you want to use it. In general, the higher the TG, the more stable the glass will be at room temperature. However, it is often the case that strong glass formers have high TG values and a small change in heat capacity, whereas fragile glass formers have lower TG values and a bigger change in heat capacity, and so fragile glass formers are more likely to be unstable at room temperature. Right, that was a very brief look at strong and fragile glass formers. You, of course, can delve into the mathematical theories behind these definitions if you want to, but I'll leave that to you. I'm happy with telling you that strong glass formers are those which show an Arrhenius type relationship between change in viscosity with temperature as they approach their TG, while fragile glass formers do not. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please be strong and hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. That really helps the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.